Well, this seems like an annual occurrence um, of having you on Countdown. Welcome to Countdown once again. It's like the Queen's speech, isn't it, really? It does, really, yeah. yes. Um, and um, <laughs> welcome to Australia. Thank you. Uh, now, listen, um, a lot's happened since March, um, as far as the music scene is concerned. But uh, you've been relatively quiet on the music scene, but very busy on the soccer scene. Mm. Well, I've done other things. I've been producing albums as well, but yeah. uh, as far as my own career goes, not really involved with it, not, not to any great extent. Soccer scene, yes, because uh, it's become very important, the Watford Football Club thing, um, and becoming chairman, I've had to devote a lot of time to it. Well, would it be fair to say then that um, the Elton John uh, music has taken second place to it? over the past eight months. Yeah, but that's been on purpose as well. I mean, when I s stopped touring at, in 76, I really had had enough of myself. Um, and I think everybody else might have had enough of me as well. Um, I got to saturation point. There was a gut feeling where I didn't want to carry on touring so much. Uh, so much. Uh, and also, that I wanted to have a real long break between records, um, between Blue Moves and anything else that I make. And I knew in the interim period there would be a Greatest Hits Volume 2 came out, so I was covered from that as far as having releases go. Um, it was sort of planned, um, and I've enjoyed it. I've, in fact, I've been more confident now about my career than I ever have been. About this time last year, you seemed very, very enthusiastic about the Blue Moves album. Um, in fact, you couldn't wait for it to be released, and you seemed entirely happy with the product, which is unusual for you. But then it appeared sort of almost about a couple of weeks later after it had been released that uh, you'd become bored with it and completely lost interest and wouldn't even promote it. Yeah, true to a certain extent. Well, true mostly. I didn't promote it. I think I did one television appearance for Sorry seems to be the hardest word. And that's about it. I just... But that, that was only that, after... No, I, I, I was to... still satisfied with the album. But that album closed a chapter in my life and I it was such, it took such a long time for when we were making it from when it was being mixed because Gus used to take forever mixing uh, and then when it came out that I did get bored with it yeah um, although I still like as an album I, I consider it to be one of my best um, but I got bored I just got bored generally more my career um, I wanted to do something else um, and that's why I didn't promote it. I know you've had a go at me for saying, well, if we'd had promotion films in Australia, etc., etc. But I just wasn't interested. And I know you're right. I think the album could have probably sold more if it had more promotion. But I just wasn't interested. <laughs> it's very, it seems awful to say that, but that's the truth. I mean, did it all become too much for you? Uh, I just, I'd done everything, you know? Yeah. Um, it's a question of, I, I'd had a number, I was the first person to have a number one uh, album come straight in at number one in America. I, that happened twice. I'd done everything, I played the biggest places, I'd broken records here and there. Um, I think it was time for, I realised it was time for me to step, step out and reassess myself. Either I was going to go on as a product um, and just churn myself away and become really, really bored with myself. The reason I stopped was because of a stomach feeling. It wasn't something inside my head, it was a gut feeling.